Welcome and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Jane Irrigation Training Series. And today we're going to be talking about uh, something I call this month in water management services. And you know, I was talking to Jeff Toole a few months back and I was saying, Jeff, what you and your team are doing for water management services is really groundbreaking. And uh, I know we had a ton of people interested in having uh, uh, the services done for them, uh, built a clientele, he's got his, uh, his initial group going now. And I said, you know, it would be so interesting for us to follow along what you are doing all year long so we can really understand what water management services are, uh, what you're doing and eventually the outcomes. And so uh, I'm really hoping this is going to be a monthly update as to what's going on, because uh, I know I'm super curious about it, and I know a lot of other people are as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned, Jeff's here today, Jeff Toole. He's our uh, executive vice president of Jane Distribution Holdings. He's really the thought leader today for our Jane monitoring and control team, mm -hmm. and uh, really been the person who's been pioneering these water management services. So Jeff's been around a long time in agriculture, almost 20 years uh, focused and dedicated to ag irrigation. We served on the irrigation board uh, of directors together uh, a few years now ago. Um, and I really love uh, Jeff's commitment to the industry and really respect his ability to take on a new challenge uh, in this water management services. And it's been just a pleasure to watch what you and your team have been doing, Jeff. It's been so exciting, so interesting. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And so far, I mean, you're into it now. Uh, how's it going? We're definitely into it. And uh, we'll, we'll cover some of that today. And, and Richard, always uh, thank you for the, the kind introduction. And, um, you know, it's I really want to make these. Uh, so I think between you and I and the team, uh, this will definitely be a, a monthly uh, occurrence. So I'm kind of calling on the, the WMS for the water management services uh, update episodes. So we'll get we'll get our episodes going. Maybe maybe we'll we'll get some growers to start doing some binge watch, binge watching. Um, but things are going really really well, um, and. You know, before we get into that, you know, it's going so well. I, I want to call out our team, and um, I just want to say how proud I am of the team and, and how far they've come in such a short period of time. As you mentioned, just a, a short few months ago, when we started talking about water management services, and, and here we are today, you know, reporting on the significance of our efforts and all that we've accomplished. Um, so I might be the one giving today's update, but I assure you that the team behind Water Management Services deserves all of the credit. I, I really, I hope I can do it justice today. Um, but if everyone could see the depth of relationships we are building with growers and, and the knowledge we are gaining through intimate involvement with, uh, with the crops, with soils, with our GeneLogic technology, they would be as amazed as, as I am and uh, honestly, it's, it's almost impossible for me to condense down all of these efforts into you know, the short 20 or 30 minutes we have. So I'll do my best, <clears throat> excuse me, to give some key insights today and um, as our first update and just really encourage everyone to, to stay tuned because I, I think there's just more good news and more updates coming. I won't be the one always doing them. So we're gonna give some of the other folks uh, a chance to, to get up front and center and uh, share some of those experiences. That's really cool, Jeff. I really think it's great that you're willing to share the experience. Not a lot of people would. And uh, I just want to remind everybody that I have both the uh, chat and Q&A open uh, this afternoon. So if you have some questions, or want to make some comments, use those vehicles and I'll get the uh, questions to Jeff uh, uh, when it's appropriate. Yeah, and I appreciate it if everybody would save the hard questions for the next presenters down, down the road a little bit. Uh, I only have four topics to cover today. Uh, I'll start with a single slide on some quick stats of what we've accomplished so far. And because it's such an important topic, I decided to, to devote most of today's update on the first uh, step of water management services, which is distribution uniformity. I'll go through our process and spend a fair amount of time uh, going through what we are finding through the DU testing uh, that we've done so far. 
And then lastly, I'll give a brief update on the first few weeks of producing irrigation uh, schedules for our growers. So that's what we're going to cover today. You know, the title of this slide is a very true statement. And again, my thanks go out to the team. Um, they're really the ones that are making things happen. So let's take a quick look at some of the key accomplishments these past several weeks. We've performed DU testing on 13 fields so far, and that's close to, to around 1,000 acres. We've taken over 420, uh, 425 flow measurements, uh, 205 pressure measurements. And this was a kind of a funny one. I roughly estimated we walked more than 20, 20 miles um, performing these DU tests. And, and now Eric's actually made it a part of our corporate wellness program. And so the, the team has <laughs> certainly been getting their, uh, their fair share of steps in. So it's, it's always good to get outside and I think everyone has enjoyed it. And um, it, it, but it is a lot, of, a lot of work. You can see on the image to the right uh, up here, this is a field that's about 150 acres and you can see all of the pressure and flow measurement points that we covered in this, this field. So it gives you some, some idea. And I'll go into more uh, details on this as, as we go. And then this down here is just a simple you know, just a little clip of an irrigation schedule. And that's kind of how simple it is. These are the number of hours that we were recommending on this particular, you know, schedule for a total of 45 hours for this week. So again, we'll kind of go into a little more detail uh, as we go. So Jeff, this is an amazing amount of information and man, you guys are busy collecting all this, right? Distribution uniformity testing, right? Uh, a key measurement to know uh, how you're doing going forward and, and what to watch for. Um, how many pages of notes or information do they generate? You and I thought we dodged the train because it came just before the, uh, the webinar started. So obviously uh, the, the second train is now coming through. So I apologize for the sound of that, but it'll be gone in just, just a minute. You know, it's a, it's a great, great question. And, you know, everyone can see up there the number of field units we've installed and the soil moisture probes and the weather stations. You know, this was just to give some idea um, you know, of how much work we've done, uh, 22, roughly 22 schedules. To give you, you know, kind of put it into perspective, the DU reports are very comprehensive uh, field assessments. And the, each report is anywhere from, I would say, eight to 15 pages long. And then the weekly reports, they're typically nine to 10 pages, you know, on that, that order of magnitude. So when you add up the field work along with the report writing, it's pretty easy to see just how busy everyone has, has been. And we just got a question from uh, one of our viewers and it's the same question I was gonna ask. Does the uh, distribution uniformity testing cost more money? And I see, you know, you put in a lot of field equipment. It, does, is that an extra cost too? So this, everything I'm gonna talk about today is part of the water management services program. So all of this is covered in the per acre fees that we, that we charge. And uh, so the DU testing is, is part of that. And um, we don't really offer the DU testing separately at this point. Um, there are some other elements within, <clears throat> which I'll talk about uh, in just a little bit. Uh, particularly on the, the hyper yield reporting that we that are a part of the DU reports that we do offer uh, separately. That's a pretty amazing value, Jeff. That's really great to hear. Absolutely. All right, let's go on to uh, let's, let's dive into the <clears throat> distribution uniformity. So I'm not intending for the webinar to be an in-depth presentation on DU, but I really would like everyone to leave with a basic understanding of what DU is and why it's so important. In the most fundamental way, DU measures how evenly plants receive water throughout the entire field. You know, that's, that's hopefully what everybody understands it to be and what everybody's heard. The practical way I like to think of it is that if you wanted to apply one inch of water to every plant in the field, then theoretically, if you had a DU of one, then each plant would get 
the one inch of water would get one inch of water. If your DU was 0.5, then half of the plants in the field would get one inch of water and the other half would not. And typically a good irrigation designer will design the irrigation system with a DU in the say 0.93 to 0.95 range as a perfect DU of one is, is, not, practically, uh, is not practically possible. So as I have on the slide here, you can see there, there are four key factors that affect uh, DU in uh, drip and micro irrigated fields. And they are, they are pressure differences between emitters, uh, uneven spacing between emitters, unequal drainage when the irrigation is shut off, and the flow rate differences uh, of the emission devices themselves, so emitters, sprinklers, jets, etc. Now, Cal Poly's IRTC has a very detailed description of these factors and how to measure them in order to perform in, in what I would call a full DU test. So, and as noted here, as part of Jane's water management services, we are performing a modified version of the full DU uh, test. And it's really uh, in order to get a more practical idea of how well or poorly the irrigation system is performing. And on this slide, the image to the right, as you can see, see, see here, this is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's just a simple diagram showing two fields that are irrigated by the same, same pump uh, with a main line that runs between the fields and then various sub mains, manifold lines and their associated valves. So I'm sure everyone has seen irrigation designs before. The small values located throughout the field, they represent the locations where we take uh, pressure and flow measurements. And in this case, we're taking uh, measurements in a, uh, in a sort of X pattern, which really helps us ensure we're taking measurements at the furthest point, the, the midpoints, and the points closest to the water source. And we take these measurements uh, based on the irrigated block. So in, in this example, if these two blocks were 20 acres each, say, and they both ran as separate blocks from an irrigation standpoint, then we would take 15 pressure, pressure measurements and 30 flow measurements in each block. So as the number of blocks increases or the size of the blocks increase, then we would increase the number of measurement points. So that gives you know, some idea of the process that we go through. And for our program, from a participation standpoint, we've, we feel that a minimum DU in order to participate uh, is 0.85. And anything less than a 0.85, then we're recommending remediation uh, to the irrigation system. And we'll work with the grower uh, to make some of those, those recommendations. So this is really the important part. So trying to manage water more efficiently with a poor DU would be a waste of money until the irrigation system DU is brought up to that 0.85 or better. It's really, I was trying to think of a good example of that. And it's, it's really like trying to manage your air conditioner power consumption while keeping your house cool, but you have say poor insulation, you've got single pane windows, you've got air leaks you know, around the doors and the windows you're better off spending your money on fixing the air leaks and improving the insulation before you'd ever spend a penny on a higher efficiency air conditioner or, you know, try to play with the air conditioning schedule. It, that's a cool analogy, Jeff, and I, I'm thinking about it, right? I, I get what you're saying, but uh, does it really matter in how much I water? I mean, I just have to water more, right? Because I have a low DU. It's like if I want to keep my house at 75, I set the thermostat at 75, and uh, it doesn't matter how much, if I can leave the window open, my air conditioner will still crank out 75. Right, yeah, and you'll you'll see it on your, uh, your PG&E bill or your SC&E bill there. Let maybe think about this mathematically, that might help. So let's say, let's go back to the prior example. Let's say you wanted to put an inch of water on your field and the application rate of your irrigation system is 0.05 inches per hour. Fairly, fairly common application rate. Most people 
would say I'll divide the one inch that I want to put on by the 0.05 inches per hour, which is my application rate, to get my run time. So in this case, it would be 20 hours. If you do that simple math, it comes out to 20 and it'd be 20 hours of runtime. But that assumes a perfect 1.0 DU, which we already know is not possible. So to get the runtime that would ensure the entire field gets at least my desired one inch, I, ha I have to factor in DU. So let's say in our example here, uh, our DU is 0.9 then I would divide the 0.9 into the 20 hours and it would come out to 22.2 hours. So you can see it went up by 2.2 hours. If the DU was a 0.8, then it would take 25 hours of runtime to at least get one inch across the entire field. So, so simply stated, this means in order to get at least one inch of water in the poorly performing areas, you have to put more than one inch in the better performing areas. So, and, and remember at the beginning, it's, I talked about it, it's, it's how evenly the water is distributed across the entire field. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, this is a pretty important concept. Yeah, it really does help. And, you know, I think about how many fields I drive by and I'm always in awe of the plants all being the same size. Mm -hmm. or the trees being the same side. How do they do this, right? This yeah, is this yeah. part of how. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a good way of, uh, of thinking about it. We had, we had another question, Jeff, especially on, yeah. the, on the startup. Uh, this question yep. came in. Um, how much time does the grower have to devote to this uh, testing, right? I mean, um, look, I wouldn't know where the pump is or the valves or all these things. Do they have to spend a day or two with me or kind of point me in the right direction and uh, and we're the team's ready to go? You know, what the grower has to provide is ideally the irrigation design map. That's a, that's a huge help. Let's us know where the irrigation, uh, where the main lines are uh, manifolds, valves, et cetera, et cetera. So, and it also gives us insights into the original design in terms of what was intended, uh, from an application rate and a DU, uh, perspective. So it really, it really helps us in that sense, but really other than that, you know, we talked to the grower about, you know, some of their practices and, uh, they open the gate and, and turn us loose. Um, it's it's the growers really don't have to do uh, anything much other than that and, and turn the system on. So I, obviously you can't do a DU test without the water running. So <laughs> and, and believe it or not, we've had a few instances where we've had to wait and uh, kind of schedule that where it would work best um, for what the grower was doing and running water so that um, we can go out and, and take uh, take the measurements while it's running. But it's, it's a good question. Yeah. Okay, great. And yeah, and if they want to be fully involved with it, that's okay too. I'll, I'll go through this process and they know it and, and be happy to give them a, buckle, a bucket and a, a pressure gauge and start to, and have at it. So that's what we're talking about right now. It's a great, uh, great segue. Um, we're going to look at some of the actual tests and really see um, how you know some of the results and how well this this has worked for us so far and this is one of the te uh, fields we tested so you can see uh, some of the measurement points on the map there and as i said there's really nothing fancy about du testing it's it's using a liquid filled you know liquid filled pressure gauge buckets and beakers um, for jet ear for jet and sprinkler systems we put the we put the emission device right into a five gallon uh, bucket for three minutes and measure the water collected uh, using a graduated beaker. For drip irrigation, um, the beaker or collection cup, as you can see here, um, is placed directly under the emitter for three minutes. And you simply keep moving around the field to the specified collection points, uh, take measurements and record the results until you've covered them all. You know, it's, it's, we've thought about this. I've thought about it a lot. And uh, even with all of our technology advancements today, 
DU testing still has to be done the old fashioned kind of brute force way in the field. There's just, there's just no other way to, uh, to really do it. I'm thinking about those 20 miles of walking when you're yeah. uh, saying that, that <laughs> totally makes sense. Definitely. <laughs> I think it's probably Definitely. more than 20. <laughs> I think that's why everybody was in a hurry to try to get them done before it got too hot. Um, so this slide shows the actual res results um, from that last field and uh, the pressures are mapped, uh, which is which is very helpful. It's something we do uh, in each instance and it helps us identify pressure variations in the field. So large pressure drops create variances in the flow from the uh, emission devices, uh, particularly uh, those that are not uh, pressure compensated. And it can give us insights in terms of what's you know, going on in the field. So we always map, map the pressures across the field. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details here, but if you look at the top, you can see, you can see here um, the results. The formula for DU is, is quite simple. It's, it's the average of the lowest or first quartile of flow measurements divided by the average of all of the flow measurements. And so, you know, here you can see those values, um, first quartile, the average, and then uh, the DU calculation here, which was you know, 0 0 0.907, which we would call a 0.91 DU. And this is just a snippet off of the spreadsheet that we use. So all these flow values are typically, you know, just over here in the spreadsheet, but I wanted everyone to kind of see, you know, the methodology that we, uh, that we use here. All right, so some of this um, folks have seen before. This is, this is not part specifically of the DU test itself but it's part of the comprehensive field assessment that we perform. And it's, it's part of the report that we provide to the grower. So all of the data that you see here is from our partner, AgriLogix. And in the top left, we see the hyper yield contour map of the field. And, and I explained these uh, in one of our previous webinars, but I, I do wanna go through them briefly again here. So I'll, I'll go as quickly as I can, just for those that didn't participate in that last one, they can at least get some orientation to this. So the hyper yield map is, it's a compilation of the historical weekly ETC values from the prior year for each 10 meter by 10 meter pixel in the field. So these values are averaged over the year and then contours are generated based on the variation from that average for each, each pixel. So, so the light green areas in this case show the average to plus 10%. The dark green shows the plus 10% to plus 20% above average. And then there's a darker green to the, you know, to the far there that's, that shows over 20% and, and there isn't any of that on this, on this particular image. On the other side of the average, on the negative side, the yellow shows from zero from the average down to minus 10%. The orange shows from minus 10% to minus 20% below the average. And then lastly, the red shows more than 20% below the average. And um, it's an easy way to see, uh, to see this just below the, the hyper yield um, contour map is the hyper yield, yield histogram. It's a hard word to say sometimes. And here you can see how many acres fall into each of these performance categories. So as you can see, a large majority are in the light green, which is the average to plus 10%. And it's, it's hard to see, but that's about 42 acres. Hmm. There are about 12 acres in the dark green, which indicates above average performance between, you know, say plus 10 to plus 20%. There are roughly 10 acres underperforming, which is the combination of, of these two. I believe the red in this map is more caused by edge effects where the polygon boundary is, is probably capturing some of the road on the upper edge of this field. So this really gives you a nice, a nice picture of what's going on um, in, in the field itself and then bending it by acre in terms of areas that you know, are performing above and below average. Next, here is the five-year ETC trend 
And in this case, you can see the growth of the almonds uh, as the data goes back to just after they were planted. And this shows uh, the average inches of water consumed uh, on the field on a weekly basis throughout the year. Last year, um, these trees peaked out at just over two inches uh, per week during the hottest time of the year. And you can see this you know, up in this area, that's two inch. Um, numbers are kind of hard to see, um, but uh, that's a two inch, two inch line there. The bottom right graph, this graph here shows the two year and the five year average water consumption by month. So the, the dark blue is the two year average and the light blue is the five year average. And there's a pretty significant difference between these. You can see the difference between the bars. And that's because um, in that five year average, these trees were just planted. So the water consumption, and you can see it here, would be you know much, much less when you average these five versus averaging these last two. So it gives you that consumption by a month. And we use this for water budgeting, for really looking at um, you know, how much water is going to be required on a monthly and an annual basis. Now, this is uh, mind boggling, Jeff, because I'm, I'm trying to think if I didn't have access to this information through water management services or through Jane Logic, how would I get it? And when I look at like the hyper yield contour yeah. map, I couldn't, right? I, there's right. just no way there's another way to get this information. So uh, my guess is this costs a lot more money or it's an add on or something to your service. Sure. Um, yeah, as I was saying earlier, the, the hyper yield um, reporting is, is available commercially. We do, we do offer that and, and I think it's, it's very comprehensive. You know, there's a lot of things here that I'm not showing that are, you know, soil, precipitation, wind, other ETC maps and charts. So it's, it's a quite comprehensive um, report. And that the full report is um, $1,200 per polygon or field. And the field or polygon can be any size. So it doesn't matter if it's a 40 acre field or a 400 acre field it's uh, it's the same twelve hundred um, dollars, and um, you know that I think it's a good it's a good price. There's a lot of data there. There's a lot that goes into um, creating the report, and what you can't see here on the images are all of these graphs are interactive. So when you hover over them online, you know you actually see the values. So as you're pathing around on the map or any of the charts or graphs, it's fully fully interactive. So um, just so I understand you correctly, um, it is included with the water management services and yes. somebody who doesn't have water management services could just pay for this and get it. Right, exactly. Yeah, well, that's great. That's really great. And we've had some customers that have done that and it's been, been beneficial. So now we've got uh, some of the more, I'll, I'll say some of the more fun and interesting stuff. Um, not, not poking at anybody. Uh, I have a collection of these photos from the fields we did DU testing on, uh, and then I'm gonna try to show most of the issues. Everyone has these issues, and, and my point in showing them is that they all have a negative effect on DU. So properly taking care of these issues will have a very positive effect on improving your DU, so I think it's important. In this case, um, these photos show emission device issues, including uh, squirting emitters, clogged emitters, and a leaking uh, sprinkler. So when you think about what's going on in these pictures, these places in the field are either getting, you know, too much or too little water. And, you know, that is what directly affects the, uh, the DU. Here's some more. So these, uh, these photos also show uh, other emission device issues. And this is mixed button emitters in the field. So you have PC versus non-PC and, and probably different flows, maybe the same flows, but you know, PC and non-PC emitters are going to uh, flow differently depending on what the, the pressure is. And um, we, uh, we also have a leaking spaghetti tubing here. 
in, uh, in both of these, these instances. And what you, uh, we saw more of that than I, I would have wanted to. And I believe what happens is people have a mindset, you know, we all get this mindset, you know, a few leaks here and there, you know, don't really matter, you know, the labor to fix these things, but frankly, they add up, you know, they add up and they do affect the, uh, the distribution uniformity. And so it's, it's really important to, uh, to try to correct these, uh, these issues. You know, the other thing I didn't mention here, not only mixed button emitters, but mixed flow jets. So, you know, we saw areas in the field where you have, you know, redheads and then you'd have a couple yellows and then everything else, you know, is, is blue. So you would see some things, you know, where you're having mixed flow rates. So different colors mean different flows um, for most of the manufacturers. So that's another, another important area to, uh, you know, to consider. Jeff, we have a question coming in and uh, the sure. question is this, did you find any fields uh, or blocks that were perfect that didn't have one issue? Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this happens, it's, right? This is absolutely this is why the visual inspection is so important. Right, absolutely. So in this slide, I wanna, I wanna talk about some miscellaneous uh, things we found. Uh, of course, any, any leaks, uh, negatively impact performance. Uh, the ones at the pump and filter, not so much in terms of the DU for the field, unless they're significant enough to impact the pressure or flow in the field. However, they do negatively uh, affect the overall system efficiency and certainly, certainly waste water. Pressure regulators, you know, as we're showing um, here, they are not recommended um, to be placed throughout the field by the IRTC and uh, can negatively impact the DU. In this case, in this particular field, they did not seem to degrade the DU, but but frankly, we'll never really know because you can't you can't measure you know, or test without them. You know, they're already they're already in the field. We did find a few, however, that were not functioning properly, which caused uh, a greater than normal pressure loss and um, and reduced flow. So. These are kind of isolated instances, and we would recommend a regular maintenance program to flush and check uh, that they're all operating properly. And then also flushing practices seem to vary, and we found a number of lines uh, with quite a bit of debris and silt in the ends, which is, is probably no surprise there, but it, it will cause reduced flow um, in the emitters near the end of the line and eventually you know, will cause you know, plugging. And you can see these, these various um, photos here where we're showing the leaks and so forth. So to summarize some of the findings, um, hmm. tested 13 fields, as I mentioned before, and the average, so it's, I don't know if this is totally correct, but the average of the averages, the average of the DUs is 0.87. So we took all 13 of the fields and, um, and averaged them, which is, which is pretty good. The median was 0.91. The highest DU we recorded was 0.94 and the lowest was 0.67. And the 0.67 um, was a field that had, had a lot of uh, its elevation changes uh, in it. And it had some pressure you know, issues. And so, you know, that really does affect the DU significantly. And in that case, you know, we're gonna be, you know, working with that grower to, you know, find some, uh, some remediation that we can do out there to bring up the DU for all of the reasons that we talked about um, before. Uh, some of the other things that we found, you can see here on some of the observations, some of these are Pretty, pretty obvious, but I think they're noteworthy. So newer irrigation systems have higher DU values. Elevation changes have to be accounted for to overcome pressure losses and gains. Field workers typically replace jets and button emitters and sprinklers with whatever is lying around or available. So make sure you have the right ones on hand and, uh, and to emphasize the importance of replacing like for like in the field. Um, a lot of small leaks are being overlooked. They add up and it's, and it's worth fixing them. Maybe not such a, such a surprise, but the cleanest lines, this was kind of funny, the cleanest lines 
were the closest to the roads. <laughs> and, and, I and, get it. <laughs> uh, yeah. In some instances, the further we went into the field, the dirtier the water, um, you know, on the ends when we would flush, flush the ends and, and observe it, you know, indicating that these are not, you know, whoever's doing the line flushing is making it in a few rows, but they're not, you know, not going all the way in, at least not consistently. So it's something good to check because it does ultimately impact the, uh, the distribution uniformity. All right, we're getting to the end here. So I really only have one slide on this particular update because I really wanted to focus, you know, as we just did on the distribution and uniformity and the importance of distribution uniformity. And because we're gonna be doing this on a monthly basis, I really want um, one of the future, probably the next episode, will uh, we'll focus more on the scheduling and reporting, but I wanted to just give a few uh, little tidbits here that we've uh, that we've come back with so far. I would say uh, so far the grower feedback has been very positive in, in terms of the schedules that we are producing, especially on the focus side of how many run hours to runs during during the week. And I would say the biggest variation that I've seen versus our recommendations are more on the daily run times. So in other words, we might recommend four irrigations of eight hours each during the week. And for convenience or labor reasons, the grower may do two 16 hour irrigations. And you know, we've been, we're very supportive of, of following their practices. And then we monitor the infiltration uh, as, you, as you can see. And it's this image here shows these two longer irrigations and you can see the water was within this target moisture zone here. So in this case, it, it really worked out, you know, for the grower. I included one, another one here with a different grower that is taking the recommendations and doing shorter, more frequent irrigations and you can see you know, a nice wetting pattern down through his, you know, target uh, moisture zone there. So you can see both methods work. It's very, it's very flexible. The technology allows us to be flexible. It allows us to make sure we're maintaining the water where the water needs to be. All of this data is, is provided to the, uh, to the grower. And then it, lastly here, this is one of the uh, images where you have ETC from AgriLogix showing this stair stepping up as we kind of go into the season and then the water applied. And in this case, the grower is, is following um, that, that particular schedule. How we're creating the, the schedule itself is really a blended approach. Um, we're, we're taking, we first take a look at the replenishment of what was consumed last week using AgriLogic's ETC value. Then look at the Jane Logic forecasted run times, which is based on the coming weeks forecasted ET. And so far this approach has been working out really well. Um, and, and it's, I think that blended approach of looking at both water consumption and forecasted amount is giving us a good target range. And then of course, you have to consider the DU when you're looking at the system and making these recommendations. So we're always including that as well. And so far it's been, uh, it's been well received. Uh, I, I hope in a future episode, we can actually maybe get a grower or two to come on and uh, talk about their, their experience and, and some of the things that uh, they like about the program and, and so forth. And One of the things that I think is so uh, cool and interesting about this is it's really a collaboration between yes. your team and the grower, right? They don't have to do what we say, but if they're not going to, there'll be a discussion about it and uh, they're gonna have good things to uh, uh, contribute as well. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's simple. It's a very, I think the relationship, it's, it's very respectful. I think there's, there's a lot of back and forth and uh, which, which is great, it's fantastic. 
and when there is a deviation, we want to try to understand the deviation. What's driving it? Do you not trust the numbers? Is it your, your experience? Do you want to get ahead on water right now? Is there um, is it there, there are labor issues? So you want to run all of it on this day and not that day. Um, it could, it, there's just so many variables in there. And you're absolutely right that that personal relationship and going back and forth, it's, uh, it's been really, really eye opening. Yeah, I can only imagine it makes it better uh, for both sides. Um, we have another question coming in and this person saying I'm already a Jane Logic customer. But you know, I already have my uh, soil moisture sensor. I already have the software, the service. Can I still sign up for water management services? Oh no, they're 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 out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely, we're we are we are pretty much you know when we launched this program this year, we wanted to to have uh, ten growers, and uh, we're we're right there. We're, we've got over a thousand acres and we just, uh, we just got another 150 acres. So we're getting near our limit. I would certainly be more than happy to talk to any of our growers about the program itself. We'd, we'd be happy to try to figure out some type of custom you know, program. And then if, if you have an experienced Gene Logic user that wants to leverage some of the things we're doing here, We'd love to try to educate you and help you do it yourself, especially if you feel pretty comfortable with the tools. I think we can teach, um, teach you very quickly and, and uh, do some, do some handholding and give you some guidance that uh, could, could result in a win-win outcome for, for both of us. So Jeff, if I want to talk to you more about uh, water management services, how do I get a hold of you? Well, I guess I would click to the next slide and uh, there's the contact information. If you are an existing, you know, user, you have an account manager um, that you can reach out to, whether it would be Stephen, David, or Connor. Um, our customer service department is always available. I'm certainly always available, and uh, reach out to any of us. Yeah, I think it's great, Jeff, uh, that you're doing this. Um, when I say doing this, I mean providing the water management services, number one, and two, reporting on it. I don't know too many people who'd like to come on a live webinar and talk about what they do in their job every day, right? Um, yeah. So I, I think it's quite uh, brave of you and the team, and uh, I really appreciate what you guys are doing. No, oh, thank you, Richard, and we're super proud of it. As I said, to start, I'll, I'll finish and say I'm super proud of the team and everybody that's contributing to this. It's really where the rubber meets the road, and that's how we're trying to be. I won't say trying. That's how we are being different um, than some of the others out in our, in our industry. Yeah, well, great job to you and to them. Uh, thanks so much for being on. I want to say thank you to all the attendees for joining today and the great questions that came in. I always appreciate that. Remember, you can see all our uh, video trainings at janesusa.com forward slash trainings. Uh, we've also seen a uh, big influx of people listening on our podcasts, and you can find us, uh, Jane Trainings, uh, Irrigation Training Series on Spotify, Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio podcasts. So again, thanks, Jeff. Thanks to everybody. And uh, we'll thanks, be Richard. back here on Friday. And uh, Michael Pippen's going to be talking to us about uh, should you get certified, should you get a certificate, or should you get a license if you're a water manager? What's the best way to go forward? So that'll be very interesting. So thanks again, everybody. And uh, we'll see you Friday. Thanks very yep. much. Thanks, Richard.